Um, if the referendum does result in the no vote, what is the way forward? I mean, for example, is there a viable path to treaty that doesn't begin with the voice? Or are we stuck with the failed status quo for the foreseeable future? I'll just go to the Minister. Sure. Um, thanks, Peter. Uh, millions of Australians have not voted yet. Uh, and I'm going to respectfully wait for them to vote before we uh, start uh, postscripts. Uh, the most important thing to understand, and I really do thank you for your question, is that this is an incredibly simple proposal. It is about, as we've heard, it's about recognition, it's about listening, and it's about getting better outcomes. Uh, there is a massive agenda in Aboriginal affairs, uh, reforming the community development program, for example. Uh, so uh, all of those things will continue to happen, closing the gap. Uh, but I am completely focused on a successful outcome. OK, but you're floor. a realist too, Linda, <laughs> and you've seen the public polling. It doesn't look good for your campaign, and you it, you must know it, right? You're a realist. Okay. So on Sunday, when everyone's just trying to work what out what's happened, what will you, as the minister and the prime minister, offer Australians? But more key, Indigenous Australians. What will they be offered? Will there be a pathway to treaty? Uh, there, there is pathways to treaty happening in every state and territory, but at a in federal Australia. level, at a national level. Uh, the the focus I will have. Uh, Patricia, uh, between now and the referendum is a successful vote. Uh, we will uh, look at the outcomes uh, to make further decisions about what will happen. But let's be clear, the disadvantage will still be there on the 15th. There will still be much to do. And the important thing is to make sure that we as a country go forward together. And that will include uh, making sure that what happens after the referendum uh, is what happens, but let's focus on what's in front of us okay. and that's a successful so James, referendum. you want a no vote. Um, so the Prime Minister made it clear on Insiders this week, not sure if anyone was watching, but he said he would not legislate a voice. He would see it as a lack of endorsement for a voice. Do you still think that you should be legislating for regional and uh, local voices? Uh, that's the position we have. I, I agree Even with Linda. Even if there's a no vote? We, well, absolutely. That's part of our advocacy for a no vote. So you is, would is not see, because so, that's different to the PM's position, you would not see a no vote as an indication that you shouldn't legislate a voice? So I agree with Linda that we'll wait for and respect the outcome on Saturday. And I think that both parties will be under an enormous pressure to take a very comprehensive policy position, in our case, to the next election. But the government of the day can, can do some significant things at the, at the first opportunity. That's up to them. Uh, we've certainly uh, talked about uh, a local and regional process very much envisaged out of, out of Karma Langton. But you wouldn't uh, see it as a denouncement of the idea of that concept of a voice? Well, no, our, our position in advocating against the referendum is that we think that we can create a very good structure to listen to Indigenous communities and this Canberra bureaucracy is not the way to go. And why would, like, if you legislated it, why is that not bureaucratic <laughs> but it is if it's in the Constitution? Well, this is a local and regional structure, so it's listening to the communities that have been talked about earlier. I mean, the PM said this afternoon that the National Voice will probably have 24 members. So South Australia's allocation of members of a National Voice would be two people. Now, I don't know many Indigenous South Australians that would say, yeah, I think two Indigenous South Australians would adequately no, that, represent all of the communities the amongst Langton South Langton. Australia. That's not in... That's in the Karma Langton report, and maybe the, uh, the well, Prime Minister... that's what the PM keeps telling us to well, look at, the Karma Langton needs, report. He needs to come and speak to the advisory group and come and speak to the working group and the engagement group that Minister Burney was part of. So... That's not what we were wanting, and also that's a detail that that will be worked out. And PM of course, said it this afternoon: twenty-four well, people will be on this voice. Well, that's the number he corrected. used in his radio. This radio is my program. point: they're not talking to grassroots mob; they're talking to people they elect themselves. 
They need to leave us alone and let us three, less than 3% of the population vote on ourselves. If this fails, we, they need to let us vote on what we want as Aboriginal people without everybody else overriding our vote. Uh, the, the, the issue is that uh, a referendum, which is what we're heading towards on Saturday, is a binary vote. It's yes or no. That's all there is. There isn't a, another pile that says uh, treaty. There isn't another pile that says progressive no. There is yes and no. There are two piles. So if you're voting no, you're voting with Clive Palmer, you're voting with Pauline No, you're Hansen, voting with grassroots mob. With, with Peter Dutton. Oh, I'm a grassroots mob. And the other, the other point that I'd make is that the Karma Langton report talked about 24. But the Prime Minister, I'm sure, also reflected that after the referendum, and this is so important for people to understand, that after the referendum, it is the role of the parliament to decide the functions uh, and, and the way in which the voice will operate. Mm. That is not what the referendum is about. The referendum is about recognition and it's about how we want to recognise. It is simple, it is straightforward, and it is not all of these other issues that have been introduced to confuse and to create disinformation and misinformation. Sovereign I promise have you, been here. I promise you, uh, sovereignty is preserved, and I promise you that this is a simple proposition that we're asking you to come on a journey with us I'll give you for a, a quick response, future. James, but, and I say quick well, all, because we have not I'd, much yeah. longer. All, all I'd say is we've been criticised for saying, if you don't know, vote no. And the Prime Minister says, go and look at the Karma Langton report. That'll give you all the detail. Now the Minister just says that report's wrong. The 24 is not what it's going to no, be. I it didn't could be say it was God wrong. knows what. That's so not true. at the end of the day, this is the problem that Australians that are struggling true. with. They say, what is this thing? How's it going to work? What's the detail? Now we've just heard a revelation that even the one it's report on the, they tell us to keep looking at principles. can't now be relied on. There's the voice principles and designs. There's the oral or statement from the heart. There's reports from there. There's also the multiple reports from the previous, from the referendum councils. There's been a report every they year. They all say different things. Yeah, but there is also the <laughs> there is also the, you go and ask and the, the design sister. principles that are there on the website on the Uluru Statement website, on the Yes23 website and the Voice rep website. Why don't you acknowledge sovereign law first? I'm Why don't you acknowledge person. sovereign law I'm first and what we want? Because I've sat up there with the elders in Alice Springs all the way up to Darwin, all the way up to Tiwi, all the way up to my mother's country, WA, in the desert. I've sat with all of them and none of them knew about this. Natasha, so explain that to me. Natasha, sovereign rights are not affected. Well, I have different information, is, Linda. Is, I'm sorry. Well... Uh, I, have look, I, I appreciate and I respect And I don't trust saying. politicians. Look what they've done to us for over 250 years. I can't trust a pattern of behaviour that only leads us to destruction, like Dr Gondara said. It's only going to lead us to more destruction. Sally? I mean, so for there is that mistrust in politicians. There's Absolutely. also mistrust in what we've seen in the media throughout this campaign. There's a lot of Trumpism elements that have come through. But for me and what the elders said on the ground uh, during the Uluru and those dialogues, they said, we need to be a part of this and we need to use their law, this the constitution, this rule book, and be a part of that and be in that. So you, So it's not dismantled. The amount of times our voices and our opinions and the way that we get used to a program, how it's run, then the changing of government, they get away with it because they have a spang-dangled way, new thing that they want to do because it's their legacy piece, not with the legacies of our communities. It's, so they get away with it. And so what we're actually saying, no, let us use this, let us use our skills in this process. And Natasha, you keep talking about you're a grassroots person, so am I. I'm yeah. from a remote community and I'm, well, I'm I... sitting there with my elders and I know my, the women that I sit and talk to all the time want better outcomes for our kids and our young women across the country. And so this is something that is affecting all of us and Absolutely. we want that's to be... That's why we okay. should be the only ones voting, right? But that's not the way that the constitution works. Of course but... it isn't. It's a... 
No, of course it's, it isn't. It's not. Peter Melanouskas? Uh, a bit of cynicism uh, towards politics and politicians is actually healthy. Mm -hmm. That's what sort of makes the system work a little bit. It holds well, I'm deeply suspicious of the three of you. <laughs> sure, well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Touche. Um, but the, the one thing that sort of drives cynicism um, and frustration in Australian politics in recent years is when politicians are seen to abandon conviction, mm. uh, promises that they've made to the electorate. Now, the PM, the now Prime Minister, the then Leader of the Opposition, was crystal clear about this to the people of Australia ahead of the federal election. Federal Labor said if they get elected, if Anthony Albanese becomes the Prime Minister of the nation, they are going to deliver on the Uluru State from the heart, including first and foremost, a referendum on the question of the voice. You're right. So if there is a no vote delivered, and you said earlier you respect people voting no, you take yep. a different view that you think it's... What do you think the federal government needs to do? You have a South Australian voice. We do. Does it, does it have less ability to, you know, affect no, power there's, there's, if there's, there's, there's no there's, federal voice? What happens? Now, well, in our case, we... Um, in fact, it was the very first election commitment that I made as then Leader of the Opposition. It was back in 2019. I said that if we were elected in 2022, we would have a state-based voice and we would legislate a voice to the parliament as provided for under our constitution. That is now in place. The elections will open up in January next year. The elections are in March and we anticipate the state voice will be making its advisory contribution to the parliament throughout the course of next year. Uh, at a state level. That will go ahead. I think it's unfortunate if the federal voice fails. Um, I think having a voice to the state parliament and the federal parliament would have had a degree of continuity to it. That would have been a good thing. But if that doesn't happen, that doesn't preclude the state parliament from making better decisions by listening to a non-binding advisory committee on matters they know more about than most other members of the parliament. So uh, we will proceed with that federally. Um, well, let's wait and see what the outcome is, Patricia. Well, what's your message, Linda Burney? Last question to you before we get to the uh, next question. My message. To, no, no, it's, it's a specific question. To Indigenous Australians who might be feeling pretty rotten, whether they voted yes or no on Sunday, uh, my, my what is your message about what the government will do? My, my message is uh, to walk at all, be proud of where you've come from, be proud of who you are, um, and uh, the way forward is that young Indigenous people cannot have the same experiences as their fathers and grandfathers, mothers and grandmothers. Things have to improve in this country and the way forward is to go forward together and that's what we're asking for um, and that's what we want.